All right, blessings to the brother Andre. Time, Give thanks for the vibration, yeah? Being with us as the youth of the generations. But yeah, come be the leader of the generation. Yeah. Strength, brother. Bless Power. You. Every time. Every time. Yes. Welcome forward to Reasonings right here at the Tree of Life. We're in Garden Town. That's my community. We've got Brother Raman Singh, Brother Bob behind the camera. I am Jerome Sage Butler. And we're talking about, um, you know, living like Christ. And I think, you know, we, we, we had an earlier discussion. We we're talking about doctrine and delusions, right? And it makes us at one point question, right? <clears throat> Pardon me. What was a sound doctrine? What and I and and I in this I guess we could say well sound doctrine would suggest the ways of life that is like Christ's way of life the way Yeshua lived. True. So sound doctrine would be you I us fashioning a life like his life. That would be a sound doctrine. If we didn't define it completely in the first one. Because if you're going to watch more than one, right? So we're defining here that we didn't establish to a degree. We established what the Bible said, but we are establishing consciousness. It's living like what Christ, how Christ lives. So we're talking about now, how do we live like Christ? Brother Raman, how do we live the Christ-like existence in 2020? Yes, yeah, so God living like Christ, you have to be godly. Mm -hmm. Not meaning godly meaning proud and arrogant or i am god you know you mm. know like the new term now bro god yeah and you know everything a mm. god 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 yeah call everybody god okay. and yeah like you big them up like that's a boss yeah you're a boss man yeah you know well, king that you know a lion yeah. you know yeah yeah big up people you know the new type of big up a god god bro you know? god bro god i heard them <laughs> say it and i was like okay so it is like they are conflating god to a human condition then yeah but not we want to be like in term, when we say godly yeah. we are talking about living with love yeah. isn't it? it can't just be a human condition right it has to be more than a human a, a way to aspire the human condition to be to be lifted up to a higher quality then yes sir so so that would be a, a christ like life and when a man then in our culture is saying bro god are others are saying they are god we are saying, because many times, previous in the past, we used to talk about this thing. The Spirit is saying to me, no, Jeremy, you can't just say sharp like that and leave it. When we are saying that people are saying that they are gods, what we are saying is this. Archetypally, what they are doing is conflating what we have said is a sovereign, supreme entity, idea, premise, that is beyond us. We might not have always known the nature of this being we, we said there are attributes which are manifest so when humans say i am god what you're saying is that you are conflating all of the cosmic and the celestial to a human condition so if it is a human condition it is humanly possible then to have what transcendence so if we are gods brother raman and myself and brother bob is asking you Show me, brothers and sisters who say you are gods, human transcendence. Please show us transcendent human existence. Because that's godly. Because you've just taken something that is beyond the realms of human and said it is human. God is the absolute, the infinite, the perfect, without flaw, not going beyond flaws as a human condition transcendence or beyond, or but beyond. without flaws right. not 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 lying because it is possible to lie it is not possible oh, hey. Hey, for god to lie it's the absolute it cannot then be conflated into the transient and impermanent it's, it's impossible. So, brothers, just dismiss that. There's no God business. Just, yeah, well, because... You know, I'm not arrogant, God, you know. God, technically, you know, yeah, yeah. technically, that's why we call um, God the Father. You yes, see, see. And we are his children. Exactly. And if you are children of God, we are gods. You see me? 
Mm -hmm. But only if you believe in Christ and take on the full body of Christ, mm -hmm. you see me? Then the Holy Spirit dwell within you. Mm -hmm. Then you become a true child of God. Mm -hmm. You see me? Because God never take a devil worship a child, you see me? Mm -hmm. And says no, this one? No, you have to come to Christ first and say, all right, you have to pick me now, you know, you can come, you know? We can reason now, you see me? All right, so here's where I'm gonna come at you, Noah. Know, um, in a little bit of a disparity your brother on because this is a doctrinal point of church but I don't agree with it. True. This is called the sonship doctrine. Okay. I do not believe in sonship doctrine. God and humans are not one yeah. by no means. God and humans cannot be one because the divine essence is not an attribute. It is that which by which attributes are. That means that we do not, cannot define our source. Our source is undefined. What we do is create arguments within the human archetype of the ideals born of inspiration from our source. Because that's all we can call it, inspiration. Because it is nothing else. What do we have? to say it is fact. Some people say there's no inspiration without information and I beg to differ because I say it is inspiration which comes before information because most things that humans go after from the realms of the absolute is pure inspiration. What do you have to justify this inspiration? You search attributes. So the attributes of information. But before you knew of the attributes, you are inspired by the unknown, by that which is not tangible. So we could not say we are children of God. That is a doctrine, right? We are living entities which are blessed of the gift of eternity. These doctrines make us preference ourselves over the animals, over the plants, over everything that is the same reason why we are alive. We are not alive just because we are humans. We are alive because animals are here, because plants are here, because, because all of this supports the life of us. Just like how the source, the Most High, supports all of our life. But if, he was to, if we were to say, we are children of God, well, the animals are our brothers and sisters. The plants are our brothers and sisters. The insects are our brothers and sisters. Because it will be the same progenity that we are from. So why are we the children of God and the ants and the dogs aren't the children well, of God? It's a Bible verse where they are praying. That, that's I'm telling you, it's a sonship doctrine. Yeah. It's well, a sonship doctrine. They say Christ is, is the son of Whoever God. Whoever believeth in God, to him, to them, gave he power mm -hmm. to become the sons of God. Mm -hmm. You see me? Because we do a song upon it, because we so share the song there with you too. And sons of and, God and again is a doctrine. You may sing it so much, though, yeah. Is it me? But just I'm just making clear to you that it is a doctrine, though. I'm not saying that it is not true. Yeah. I'm just saying that I don't agree with the sonship doctrine, right? But I know that it is an actual doctrine that churches preach the oh. sonship. So I said, go and look up the doctrine. That's why it's in the Bible. And and I can't see what makes her special from an animal, even though I'm no great believer in animals. No man, remember say when God. When Christ did mm -hmm. make we, mm -hmm. him turned to the Father and the Holy Spirit and said, mm -hmm. let us make, make man in, in our own image, image and, and our own, own likeness. Likeness, mm -hmm. likeness not yes. just the image, you know, we don't just look mm -hmm. like God. But the image of God. We have his qualities. Ah, right. It's so those image. are the attributes of God. Yeah. So now I'm asking so you though. Know, no, no, I don't am, I don't am manifesting. Uh, that's why I okay. know him say whoever believeth in mm -hmm. Christ, mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. gave he power mm -hmm. to become the children of God. Yes, to in terms of to come into the eternity kingdom, into the kingdom. Him, All God right. So, it's, because so it is in the kingdom we yes, are the sons. In the God, eternal kingdom we are the sons. God you know, is company. Yeah, but I'm saying. For eternity, he might live in eternity. You know? I'm not disputing that, but I'm so saying. Him just want company. Does it mean it's that when he says sons and daughters, but what you said, doesn't it not mean in the kingdom we are sons and daughters? Yes, sir. And Christ has made us here, right? Yes, sir. So a celestial manifestation. Yeah. So Christ is that unknown mm -hmm. celestial energy 
which we do not know of, manifesting as a living being and those who come unto his progenity you now, unto his spirit. Mm -hmm. So the spirit and likeness of Christ have nothing to do with a physical energy. It has to do with a state of being, a state of mind, a spirit right. that inhabits your body so that the divine, so wisdom, sound mind, understanding, clarity, peace shall subsist in you. Yeah, so that I'm saying, is it about a unity of man being the actual child of God or is it through Christ? We become the child of God. We become. That's what I'm asking. Because if, if, it be, if it's through Christ, that's what I'm saying. It's the yeah, only way. Because we. They are through Christ. Okay. okay. Like Christ have this next Bible. Um, this next Bible verse with Christ. And, oh, and Christ. Not, and I just want to make this clear. I'm not of the doctrine that says Christ is of the sonship either. You know. So Christ, if if you tell me that Christ is a man that born like I born, and is a man that came to enlightenment, that is transcendence. And I'm not into transcendence if I'm, a, if I'm a follower. So Christ has to say, I was there before the foundations of the earth. Yeah, I man. am. Yeah. So that means that Yeshua is not a man unto enlightenment. But it is God as man. Yeah, man. Not sonship. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And through God as man, I got entrance into eternity. That's, that's, that's my faith. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, we're, okay. That's just I'm checking. Okay. We have this next Bible verse. Mm -hmm. In the um, address the crowd. Mm -hmm. And him said, Do ye not know that ye are gods? Mm -hmm. You see me? Mm -hmm. So he addressed them, you know? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Because right. them did not talk about this God topic, you know? Yeah, Psalms 82. And him said, No man, in a New Testament. Yes, sir. Said, Do ye oh, not yeah, know? but it's also in, in Psalms 82 as well. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. oh. I just repeated several times. Yeah, man, yeah. So we just has show the relation but you know that. with we being God yeah. and how we corrupt yourself now. So yeah. we are come back living like Christ. Mm -hmm. How we as children of God, mm -hmm. how we are corrupt ourselves, you see me? Mm -hmm. How we are living hate. We are hate with neighbor. Ah. We are envy people, people of night. Hey. We envy them. Hey, you see sure. me? Hey, people sure. of we laugh for them and scan them. If you see a man who lives on the road, all the hey. time reach him. We are, we are scan him. Remember, say true religion. You see me, Bob? Brother Sage, mm -hmm. you see me? True religion mm -hmm. is in helping the orphans, helping the widow. That mm -hmm. is true religion according to the Bible. Yes, you see me? Yeah. To help the widows and help the orphan. That mm -hmm. is true religion. Mm -hmm. Cause nobody now remember them. You true see me? So if you really remember them, that means you really have a good heart. Because you you he said what you done unto the least of them, you done unto me. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, man. So that is living like Christ. Remember those, the little ones where you can help. Help who you can. You I, see I, me? I you don't have to go all out to help life. people. You can't yeah. help. You see me? So does that mean that God place people in front of you no, more no, time? Okay, true. So does that mean right that decision? True. So does that mean the people should have a state of mind like 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 Christ? And because yes, I mean, sir. how could we act like Him if we don't have a state of mind like Him? Uh, so then, no, it so comes now. It come to reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. When we read the Bible, you know, it focus your mind upon righteousness. Mm -hmm. It teach you the right ways of living. Mm -hmm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Jesus, him teach me mm -hmm. how to live. Mm -hmm. Him teach you how to pray. Mm -hmm. You see me? Moses come give us the laws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But Christ come live it, come show away. Come fulfill it. Eh? Him come Amen. fulfill it. You see me? So, so what I mean? So the, the spirit said, make a point there. So one of the things it suggests then to be a Christian, the follower of Christ, is to fulfill the law. That seems to be a prerequisite. Yes, sir. All right. And what is the law? That is an The question. law mainly consists of two things. Mm -hmm. Two things. Mm -hmm. If you can do this, mm -hmm. you surely will enter the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And ninety percent of people now do it. Mm -hmm. What is this two thing? Mm -hmm. Love God mm -hmm. with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. You see me? Mm -hmm. Two law. Mm -hmm. You see me? Love. 
So love is, is like the first and the second, but it's, yeah. but it's love. But the first thing, love God first before yes, yes. anything Everything else. Is. Yeah, because that's the source of where love comes from. Because that's you're the love, means by which you are able to love. Yeah, if you love yeah. your wife, are you picking more than God? That is sin. Yeah, but let us see explain me? to the people why. That's why God comes yes. first. Yes, yes. But to the, so we're going to explain that why. Because you're yeah. basically, you say, oh, you worship them, basically. Mm -hmm. You love them so much, mm -hmm. you put them above everything. It's like they put them on a pedestal and I say, oh, a them is and, all and, why and is, that is before God. And why is that love wrong? So, so that is the issue. Uh, yeah, because God said don't put nothing before yes, him. Yes, so, so we are so true, so we're showing the people that this so is what he's saying. When you put an individual like your wife, your husband, or maybe your job, your career, over God, when people tell you God doctrinally, we're talking about living like Christ you know, So we're gonna break down the doctrines now. So when people say you're putting your, you're putting your life, your family, your, your career over God. And the idea you have of God is a pastor injecting some control mechanism in your mind yep. or someone trying to beat you down and trying to reduce your willpower. You will not want to think that it's something wrong with loving your family because you will say your family is God. You will say the love that you express in your family is the love of God. You express for the desire to feed your family, to close your family. Mm -hmm. What Brother Raman is saying, so it doesn't get lost in just religiosity. He's saying the reason why love of God should be above all love, it is the means, the mechanism by which it is possible to love anyone, anything, including yourself. I said it again. The means, the mechanism by which you are able to love is God himself. This is very important. Yes, this is why it is important that the mechanism, the methodology comes before the manifestation. Yeah, man. You cannot put the cart before the horse. True. The mechanism by which it is possible for us to be communicating mm -hmm. with respect, without disrespect, with all of our mistakes and our faults, that is Yahuwah. That is He, yeah. Yeshua. That's all this statement is clearly saying. Yeah. Don't get caught up in the priest, the pastor, whether my words were a little wrong, whether you saw me smoking. Yeah. This is fundamental things that who taught? Yeshua taught these things. To be like him, you have to understand this. It's not the pastor's opinion. It's not Jerome's opinion. It's not the government's opinion. It is a fact of the law of being. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says, how can you know if somebody is a Christian? It says, by the love you show to your brother. Mm -hmm. If you don't show your brother love, you're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. If you hate one person in your life, mm -hmm. you're not a Christian. You see me? Mm -hmm. You cannot hate nobody. You see me? I love. You see me? And that's so the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Remember, say it there now with prayer. No? True. Forgive us our trespasses. Because we do wrong, you know. As we as forgive we those, forgive those uh, who trespass against, against us. Oh, so true. it's a deal we are make with God. Yeah. Hey. Yep, so, yep. It's a record, all right. Mm. So the dealer said, no, if you not forgive others, mm -hmm. God has said, me, now nah, forgive you. Yes. You see me? It's a yes. deal, you know? Yes. Forgive us our trespasses. As we as forgive we, those. As we, we forgive those. Forgive those. Who trespass against so us. So if we are hate people, mm -hmm. that means that we now live up to the deal. Exactly. You see me? Exactly. God now forgive we them. Exactly. Because we not forgive them. They hurt we so bad. And by, and they by, hurt we bad enough. True. For real, but by fuck, we broke our own contract too. Yeah. Because it's not just so much. Remember, God is not so much the, the, the big master over here with a stick. It is the, the, the contract and the conscience, the, the process by which a contract is authentic, right? So we would have broken our own contract. We would have failed our own ideals. Yeah, man. And, and so, therefore, again I say, when humans say our power and the God force we have is within human conscience, I beg to differ. I say the human conscience can become aware of the attributes of God. And until the human conscience becomes aware of the attributes of God, the purview of the divine doesn't become clear. Because 
Christ brings that to us more when we go deeper into the faith. Like as simple as I say about love, love is one of the most fundamental reasons for being here in life. We're talking about the fairness of God. That if we're talking about God as love, it cannot be a love that is divisible by human consciousness. That means say, a human can say, well, yesterday you were good, boom, I love you. Today you're bad, me not love you, right? Mm -hmm. So you only deserve love because you're good, all right? So I'm saying, God just said it to me. Then why would he then, being absolutely good, ever choose to not reward a bad person when they're being good, when they have done a good act? So why would he only reward a good person when they're doing a good act and not reward a bad person when they're doing a bad act, when they're doing a good act? And he also goes on to say, why wouldn't he, no devil, you're not distracting me on this one. So he also goes on to say, why would he not reproach a good person for doing a bad act? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, when he's also blessed a bad person for doing a good act. Yeah. So why would he not reproach a good person for doing a bad act? True. So that is the things that Christ has taught us. The question is, living as this contract suggests, living as this contract represents our covenant with God. Yeah, and that's the Christ-like we're talking about, at least an example of the Christ-like. Yeah, Father, make a statement himself, walk perfect. Before mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. you see me, it's a request, you know, request, you know. True. But I said, just, just do, just, just go on good, no man, you see me, please, <laughs> do better, just walk man. good. You, do better. you see, no man no perfect, you know, Thank you. but he must demand perfection from us. Mm -hmm. You see me, we have bad habits. Mm -hmm. If we pray to the most high and ask him for real, if we get rid of it, mm -hmm. you don't think he might go help with? There is you transcendence, yeah. Then there is transcendence. That's where I'll accept there's transcendence. Perfection might work. not come in a one night. You know? mm -hmm. It probably take a couple of years. Or a but if you are try to achieve it, mm -hmm. action it shall be given. True. Seek, and he shall find. Yes. You see me? Yes. How Christ yes. do it? Yes. How the apostles do it? Remember, so the apostles are just like fishermen and them sitting there. True. Which How are them man them become? Average humans, eh? You see me? Them have them faults. True. And the most I sit through that and say, come on, mm -hmm. me see your heart, you see me come. Because I don't think it was perfect people that was following him. Right. No. Then why would the point of perfection coming oh. down if we were perfect? So perfection came into imperfection to make yeah. us whole. God, look at this. Why Christ never go walk into the temple and go to the high priest the man say, follow me? Mm -hmm. The man go to some fisherman mm -hmm. who are do fishing and mm -hmm. not catch nothing. <laughs> And he said to the fisherman, them, follow me, and I make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. You see me? See the real fishing here in our life. Mm -hmm. He must say, stop do what you are do, them work work. Uh, every mm -hmm. man have to work here. You know? Yeah. But he must say, stop that work. Meaningless, he's trying to say. Yeah. To a degree. When yeah. I say meaningless, because yeah, it's catching fish. Feed yourself and yeah. feed your family. Yeah. But put purpose to the benefit. Yeah, put purpose to the work. Yeah. So he must say, oh, follow me, I make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. So I saw now. Mm -hmm. If we say we are follow Christ, mm -hmm. we are going to be fishers of men. Yeah, we are no fishy thing, you know. Yeah. You see me? Means Serious so are, thing. Yeah, so we can we break it down about. in a layman term. It means that previously we were, we were thinking of rewarding ourselves by the things we did for the pleasing of our desires. And now he's saying the things you now do will not be to the pleasing of your desire, but towards the edification of your soul and hence the edification of the soul of others majestic so just like how he shifted the paradigm from saying being fed from the stomach to now being fed in spirit you now in turn will go and feed others from the spirit and i want to say something to you know the for them language how you see this thing are written and cox to gutenberg thing them thing are translating in a european language you know so i want some conscious black people at jamaica can learn one thing you know no matter burn because they used to be fishers and men and some man a burn fire, you know, brother. Mm. But if you use your intellect and look upon the word and look upon the statement philosophically yes, and psychologically, you know. Yeah, it means if you stop thinking for just to satisfy your needs of your belly and the everyday mundanity and feed the soul that there be a higher purpose to why you serve, why you feed, yeah, why you go out and live. 
why you hold your family to, together. Share the good news, yeah. And that, and that is why you are now able to reach others by the same methodology that you are doing, trying to just feed your stomach. Because you are feeding your soul now. You can teach others to feed them soul. Yeah? Give a man a fish, teach a man how to... Give a man a fish, teach him how to fish, bring the whole school to him door. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So, you know, as we talk about, you know, living in a Christ-like manner, or living like Christ, I think a lot of people gone into the church structure again. And the pompous middle class attitude. I'm not going to start saying it because it's true. it's true. The pompous middle class attitude has pervaded as Christian life. As being Christ-like. To be ignorant and act full of yourself. Mm. And to act as if you are only blessed to be the divine providers of people's conditions. Right? Yeah. And talk down to your church brother and you have sister. Some people only Sunday alone. You can see say they are Christian. But every other day you see them, they are just this worldly and, you see me? <laughs> they are not following Christ like mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. They are not, uh, <laughs> we need to talk on righteousness. No, true, I'm, no, I'm with you. Because when we live in righteousness, you know, mm -hmm. that means that we stand up for justice. True. You see me? We now have to say wrongs and just pass Condone it with it. a blind eye. Yeah, we'll talk out, you're right. Yeah, you're we're right. going to say, no, stop that peace and love, man, when you pray, you see me? We're not going to say a fight or go on. And we're going to escalate it. No, okay. you're going to go and make peace and say, no, yeah. man. So peace, I want you to learn that Christ is the peacemaker. Take notes of the little thing there, you know, because you know we are chatting between, but that's where we are conveying the information. So take note of it. We say it's what? The peacemaker. So that's another trait of, of the divine. And look how Christ be in him, him thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Five thousand people follow him go up on a mountain. Mm -hmm. And he must start thinking and say, some of them are going to knock out by the time they, they reach down halfway. Because you know, mm -hmm. they're hungry. Because they've not eat nothing for days. Mm -hmm. So, as so comes on, he say, all right, we have no food. We can see what's going on. You know? ah, see, we have to try to make some food for the people. Because we can't just make them just go on so hungry. The mother drop down and dead. True that. So I'm thoughtful and say, all right, we're going to feed 5,000 people with what? Look at two loaves of bread and must see two fish. You see me? Five bread, two fish. How much? You see me? Mm -hmm. He multiply it up, feed 5,000. Mm -hmm. You see me? So I'm thoughtful. So that for sure you say I'm kind. True. Caring, thoughtful. Ah, so that's another. Thoughtful. So that's another behavior that Christ has yeah. a kindness of spirit. So you know the people them that are always looking out for you? Sometimes some people just say, oh, you know this little old lady, I go over here, she always smell like onion, and but she's always inviting us over, we come and we say, oh, look at children, you look tired. You hear some children, no? she a witch, and I choose she wants to suck out your blood and do these things. So guess what? There is a duality in imagery, you know? People try to destroy the image of a character that is Christ-like, mm -hmm. just like when they reject him. True. Because, Raman, well, you and I, let's be honest, right? You, you, you're the always go to the old woman in the house. The, the one who always, the, you know, I call you, look, come here, my son. You, you're the always going to our house? Okay. I, I know, because I never always go neither. And you see, when I get look bigger, what happened when you get look bigger? Didn't that perception change? Didn't you see that it was a fear? True. And then you get to understand the little one, the nicest person. True. But when you were a little kid, you thought this woman was going to molest you. Our cookie and in a stew pot. <laughs> and we can't, I'm saying woman because it was mantle. True. Because Rasta man was black and man will chop you up, cookie and eat you. True. When Rasta a vegetarian, so he will eat a little girl. And he a vegetarian. He yeah, no. never eat an animal, so he will eat a little girl. I eat a man. You understand what I mean? I man come down, he's too low. You understand what I mean? But you get what I mean? You understand what I So this is one of the things that, the characteristics of kindness and caring that means that we don't have to know you to be kind to you. So don't say, oh, you're being nice to us now. Hold on, you have ulterior motives. See them, three rasta them have ulterior motive. Watch them, when them still have chat up, what them have... Say? <laughs> These are the ways we've been trained mm -hmm. to dishonor the Christ-like behavior. Because just like how them reject him, yeah. and so we are reject people who act like yeah, this. Say, you shall be persecuted here. And count it as a blessing. <laughs> no, for we don't think so, though. Well, until after, but yeah. Because yeah. people ostracize us for doing this channel. You know what? You ever looked at those, some of those negative comments? They talk all manner of crap sometimes. It's not only the good comments, there are bad stuff there too. And I'm saying to myself, I am not seeing that these people are offering a palatable alternative viewpoint that I can sit and be edified by. But they're willing to come under our channel and write all that garbage and crap. 
and accuse me of being arrogant and accuse me of being several things. But I'm a human being just like you. Mm, that's why you're reasoning. <laughs> I reason we are reasoning. You know? <laughs> we know so we know everything, but we are saying, oh, this we know, we are reason upon this. Show. This you know, you are reason. Are you sure you're here with this of type? So the world are going like. And in the comments now, mm -hmm. we want to see reasoning. True. We want to see not just arguments. Yeah. yeah, not just I arguments. Say, oh, this happened in my life, you know? Yes. This is what me learn. We don't want to learn things from them too. Exactly. See me? 100% on that. If somebody knows something we don't know, teach we. Exactly. Don't come, come shove we under the rug. Because that's the edification of the body, yeah. of the kingdom, because that's for the faith, you know, because I know people have unique experiences. Yeah. A lot of times that you and I have never had those, but they have learned from those, right? Some people have had vivid experiences of, of Yeshua that we've not had that vivid experience. But are they, are, are they as articulate as we are? Are they in what is called the healthy, sound mental state that people will not think that they're cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo? Because Raman, we've heard very, I mean, since we started this channel, I mean, I won't call anyone's name, I'll make anyone feel uncomfortable, but when I experienced that and I expressed that, I thought I was far out. Like, my stuff was so, whew, not, not. Some stuff that I've experienced close hand with people who I've been intimate with, others I've learned since this time, people have opened up to some really dark experiences that, that, that I, I never had. So what I'm expressing here is minimal to some people's experiences that have secured them in a grander experience of their faith than even I do, because it's too real. Yeah. More graphic. Yeah, graphic is the word, I Bala Bob. dead and come back. Can't let them home leave. Well, I had a man that... One, had, had, I had a early teacher to that taught me that. that and live by, and to add it like the I had a early teacher that taught me that he died. You know? He was electrocuted. And, you know, he was always trying to teach about the aura, the auras and deep metaphysics mm -hmm. about religion. And he taught me to do metaphysics on religion because... What was happening was, I was about to dismiss things, the so-called statement, throw out the baby with the bath water. And he would say to me, don't dismiss things. That's why when I say something sometimes, it only appeals to people who are thinking a certain way, because when they're not, they just dismiss what I said. He said to me, do not throw out the baby with the bath water. Look at religion away. It represents something in human life. Maybe somebody has skewered the actual statement, meaning somebody come, and paraphrase it. Somebody come and indoctrinate you in an idea, mm. but I never actually that. So you owe it to yourself to actually find out what is the truth. That's why we say to be like Christ is not just to follow the church doctrine, it's to get a historical perspective as well as your religious perspective. We talked about exegesis in, in the other um, 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 video about how to interpret the stories in the Bible. The priests have the way they, they interpret that it is a mystical statement, whether it's a literal statement, you know, like of the Eucharist. These things are a part of how the priest puts together their understanding of the written text. How does it apply to the parishioners, right? And they can have a quite vivid, strong understanding of their faith that is rooted, Brother Brahman, not in superstition. But in fact, so why are so much parishioners' faith rooted in superstition? My faith isn't rooted in superstition. So much people's faith are rooted in superstition. So then I, I beg the question, or it begs the question, are they living like Christ? Are they living some hypothetical, idealist notion that has nothing to do with actual truth? Another example, you know, is their leader mm -hmm. of the church. Mm -hmm. They are not living like Christ to set the example mm -hmm. for everyone to see. <laughs> they living you like know? the middle class and the upper class, yeah. wanting to live like the upper class. Because they don't live like the upper class, they're wanting to. They want to have money on their mind. And private jets and playing on their own private islands. And how oh dare I, Jerome, say that the earth is a lord and the fullness thereof and a man cannot be on a private island. Who am I to say? I'm just saying, come on, man. 
you know, nothing wrong with that, you know. I just but said if, it, but come on. But if he will live like Christ, you see me? And on a private island by himself? No, no, no. no. Man. <laughs> you see me? On the island, yeah. If this man will live like Christ for mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. That means I'm going to share on them things. Okay, you know? yeah, of course. That wouldn't be a private island. That wouldn't be a private island. That would be you a know? sacred public yeah, island. Yeah, yeah, it would have been a fame little space. Yeah. So government can't shell him down. You see me? <laughs> <laughs> <That man. laughs> you think I live? You see that difference there? That is why we can have a government Christ. So we have our own island, a but ultimately, Christ gone, government. gonna lead the government. Yeah, That's right. not what our faith said. Ultimately, Christ so going to be the head of the government. We can't mm. come here, island room. We don't have no money to take it. We don't need money. We do farming and life and yeah, growth man. in the environment. The Christ, your own island, your own even the Christ last government, thing, yeah. The last thing Christ said, you know, mm -hmm. one of the last things before I'm dead, one said, Forgive them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. Just to show the love in their heart. The man them will kill him. The mm -hmm. high priest them set him up. Mm -hmm. For hang him, for crucify him, mm -hmm. you see me? Mm -hmm. For murder. The soldier them whip him. Juke mm -hmm. him in their side. And yeah. him, uh, uh, nail him up. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine nail and go to your hand, man. It's not that easy. Big nail. It's not that easy thing. So I think you're you kind of hot son. Why you, you country feel it? And he and must say, oh, forgive them. That means say, want to pay any way man feel that means say he, he that them. means say he has deep compassion. Yeah, he has deep, intricate, subtle, sacred compassion. Yeah. That's not just the average human. That means if, if you are gonna speak in context for an entire living cosmos, you must be a god. So in that manner, to have enough love to say to your your murderers, you know, you are forgiven or Forgive them, you know, yeah. because that, that, that would seem to me like you're, you're putting a gun to my head and I just squeeze the trigger. True. Far beyond the idea of Socrates drinking the hemlock, because you know a lot of people have to talk about that. Socrates drinking the hemlock, making himself a, a, a martyr rather than dishonor. I mean, Christ is a, is a more divine archetypal, you know, martyr than, than, than Socrates will ever be. Because not just the context of bringing knowledge yeah they do did it share that their sense of bringing knowledge and their sense of debunking some form of you know traditional myth but at the same time christ wasn't just about a new age conduit he was about the fulfillment of what was written and that is something that's very important it's like you say five years from now 15 years from now there is to appear a certain phenomena in the earth and when this phenomena appears this this this, this will happen mm. for so it is written so this is the thing that I think many people will miss the story if you just look at it in doctrinal terms or how the world is saying it. So Yeshua being a fulfillment of something that was spoken of, a great desire in the human heart to have God again amongst us. Because you know the ancient story, all the archetypes, but it's in the Bible that says the divine lives with us with anger in the left to the heavens, right? This is, this is, this is, this is origin stories again. And I would say examine many origin stories. So here it is that Christ the return of God amongst us. This has been an event much touted for thousands of years. It was a true desire. So, upon his manifestation, we call it the fulfillment of prophecy. And when prophecy is fulfilled and people act in a manner that was pre-described, he already understood that this would happen. So mercy was already pre-given, it was pre-designed. So all the people who go through all these situations and still come around to be forgiving and loving. Just understood that it was all in the script. Mm -hmm. If you know for his, for his sake is the stripes, the, the, the transgressions, the, the tribulations, the whippings, right? Then you know intrinsically if you take up his cross and bear it, there is the kingdom at the end of it, but there's also this tribulation. Yeah, well. So if you understood that, so Christ understood what? His place in creation. And if we are going to follow him, we have to know ourselves. So ultimately, I'm saying Christ knew himself physically, cosmically. Mm -hmm. That is important. That means that if you know, I may have said this clearly to all who said them wise, if you know by speaking truth, by speaking a certain quality of knowledge, a system built against that knowledge, 
is going to come against you and then they come against you, Christ is always saying, be truthful, be honest. Because he knew, right, why he forgave all those people. Because he knew that they were going to come and betray him. Didn't he tell, didn't he say they were going to betray him? He knew that they were going to do this. And if he knew that they were going to do this, he already knew himself spiritually, physically, and cosmically. He already knew himself. <laughs> He knew who he was. He knew his purpose and his calling upon the living space. He knew what he was here to do. So what does that mean? How could you be following Christ and then know by the fact of espousing so much love, so much truth in a world that is unbalanced, that is against truth, that is against love in its truest sense, that you are being rejected, that you are being oppressed, that your words are being misquoted? You should know yourself. How could you be a beacon of light in darkness and not expect the darkness to come to put out the light? Christ knew his faith. He said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they have done. And those in darkness do not know that the light is what they're putting out and plunging themselves further in darkness. They see the light as a disturbance in their darkness. <laughs> so please, my people, if you are there being comforted by your church community, your middle class, so-called upper class church community, feeling very comfortable and well decent, you are nowhere near a lot of the ways and means of the life of Christ. You are nowhere near being scared. You are nowhere near being trivialized. trivialized. You are nowhere near the tribulation. You are, near, you are nowhere near the kind of pain and suffering he has suffered for the liberation of the living. So to go around and hand out pamphlets and the spirit want me to say it. He says, say it, Jerome. Something is trying to resist, but I'm gonna say it. I'm not frightened. And me know I said judgment come from it. Let me just say it. Ha! Ah! And I know his fight come with it. He says not just to go around handing out pamphlets and so-called bazaar and social dinners. It's far more than that. It's far more than that. And it's not this so-called handing and solidarity. It's building a culture and an experience that supports wholesomeness. So God says, for in a policy too. In for in a governmental policy. Mm -hmm. And I just but oh Jerome and Raman, they're so decent and they're decent upstanding citizens. That if, if, if the, the guy who say my government minister come down there so and start telling people to shoot each other on the head, Jerome and Raman they upon me. Now I shoot myself on the head and I run gone left the people them. And you are follower of Christ, or who's Christ you're following? I say it, say so. So don't crucify my brother. I said it. Yeah? Don't bother coming to him church and want to put an argument upon him and me says, so come argue with me. Yeah? So when the politicians and those people become tyrants upon the people and the church finance slavery and the church finance warfare and counter warfare against the people who are espousing truth, they are anti-Christ. And they are anti-Christ. Because the Christ-like behavior that the granny have and the Rasta man up the hill and the bread around the corner, a chastisement, tribulation, right? So when you're claiming that you're all in the righteous path, you're just pompous. Can nobody not try and mash up your family life like them are doing me? And I try and mash up your finances, yeah? And mash up your mouth, yeah? And fool you with all manner of demon in the environment. And tell every woman that is interested in you all manner of darkness and fear in your heart. And that them are doing me. <laughs> For me, do this. So don't you tell me you're following Christ. Driving past in your BMW. I don't think so. Your BMW may eat your far. I bex with your far. I burn your far. It's the pompousness and the lies. The middle class, upper class lies as experience being taught to people that that is Christ-like behavior. Uh, look on this now. Them probably all have them BMW. Them alone driving night. And them sit. Three of them church members walking at their hot sun and try to go mm. home. And they not even stop to say, Do you need a ride? You know? They just walk, they just drive past them and blow. Not even blow sometimes. True. Because they have to go drive them to this part of town. Yeah. And you can't bother. And yeah. Because yeah. they, they, they live at that part of town. But where's the love in that? But on, but on Sunday, where's they, the but, but, but on Sunday though, they are there. And church telling the good old sister how they're not being sisterly enough or godly enough though. Mm. You know, Sammy, Janine, it has come to my attention that your son has been caught up in some of these issues with the, with the cops. I mean, me and my husband is saying to myself, you know, 
we, we've been, you know, disciplinary, and you've seen how Terry turned out. Our son is, is, is his third year in Yale, he's his third year in Harvard, right? And, and you know, my, my other daughter is, is, is upstate, and she's just doing her, her degree in, in, in human relations and international science. And, you know, so I do not know why, you know, your son had to come. We, we've been going to the church for 30 years, we've been in the same church. But in 30 years, you never knew her son. You never knew her. In 30 years, all you've done is done the same thing, grandstanding. All you've done is say, but there the, are the programs here at church that your son could have been a part of. Did you care? Did you genuinely care that like it was your child? Just like how oh, you got your child into university. Am I saying you should get her child into university? No, I'm saying the pattern of care that created the outcome for your child. That's what we're talking about. That pattern of care. It not come from you. It not come from me. It comes from God. That's a Christ-like behavior. That's what we're talking about. That behavior that would have made you cared for her child. Uh, it was possible to care about her life, her child's life, as you care about your own son and your own daughter, right? These are the things we are speaking about. Not judging you for your car, for your eloquence. I'm saying we are beat with many stripes because of who? That's what we're talking about. And we're not saying that you have to be downtrodden and suffering because I hear the counter maneuvers. We're not saying you have to be downtrodden and broken to be followers of Christ because I know people have to skewer arguments. We are saying it is a quality of being which is beyond being battered, which is beyond being rich, which is beyond being poor. Because poverty is what? Poorness of spirit. So that's why I mean, no say, enough with the big house and car are actually poor. Hey. Yeah. Remember the Bible say, for a rich man to enter into heaven is like a camel to go through the eye of a needle. You True. see me? True. So True. basically impossible. True. You see me? True. For a rich man to enter the kingdom. <laughs> you see me? <laughs> you know, a lot of people think it's funny because they want to say, oh, that's why y'all are poor. But if that was the case, would they be poor Christ would every Christian be poor? If that statement was no, we have to do this now. If that statement was purely a statement of economics, of making sure that the people who believe that are economically depreciated, then it would say that all Christians would be impoverished, wouldn't it? If we are saying that the kingdom is for poor people, then where did all these wealthy Christians come from? Obviously, we don't believe that to be a statement that has to do with economics. We believe it is a statement to do with a metaphysical of a man's mind being cluttered by possessions uh, to not think yeah. clearly. <laughs> All right, see it now. You remember the rich man come uh, to him yes. and say, Lord, I studied, I, I studied the Bible, uh, I studied the scriptures. Yeah, the Torah. The I, time. Lived, I lived mm -hmm. good. The I Talmud do everything it said books, must yeah. do. Yeah. What, what more I need to do? Mm -hmm. And Christ said, give away. All of your riches. I believe I task collector that I task collector that was Zacchaeus, wasn't it? I don't remember that. I think I was Zacchaeus. He was a rich man, isn't yeah, well, yeah. Give me all your possessions. Yeah, but it's me. Yeah, yeah. True. Follow him. Yeah. And the man say, oh, we can't do that, you know. Because what? He put in possessions above all things. That's him identity. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. him God. Yeah, I'm God that. Yeah. You can't have there. two gods, you see me? Mm. And the two gods are God and money, you see me? True. So you can't yeah, no, love yeah, one and, mm. and love the other. Mm. You see me? Oh, true, true. Yes, sir. So if you love the money, you have to put God on the back burner. True. You have to put God first, then money come from uh, the back burner. All is, all is, all but the thing will happen to Talaman, vanish him. Because all is vanish him. Give him the lesson before him dead. And yeah. say, oh, but who for wealthy, wealthy? Yeah. Remember Abraham, wealthy man. Job, mm -hmm. wealthy yeah, continue, man. Continue, you see me, right. King David, King Solomon, wealthy people. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see me? Mm -hmm. So who for wealthy for wealthy? Yeah. In order for things. Because because because, it, because, because, because so enlightenment to to has to be pure on all level. Uh, and, and that means say uh, rich. We're coming to you, Bob. Rich has to be possible to be enlightened. Meaning wealth. That there's enlightenment within wealth, and enlightenment within poverty. And enlightenment in the paths in between. So it's not that specific pathway, but your pathway can become a burden. Because you cannot, some people are so poor in a spirit that they will not 
try to go beyond their condition and blame it on a state of godliness. Like the man say, oh my Jesus, met me there, saw so me, just love me, little piece of this, and me, little piece of that. And sometimes, I, I, I probably am I'm guilty sometimes of those thoughts. So I'm not trying to accuse. I'm saying it's, 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 it's a factual expression of what I've seen. Yes, yeah, some people say, I love me, little one, this, my little one house, my little one car, my little this, my little, because my simplicity of life, I love it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not just a, a, a recognition of the divine nature in simplicity. Sometimes it is a fact of defeat. A self-defeat. Sometimes mm. it's, it's that the light isn't resonant in them. It isn't enlightenment. Mm. It, it, it is really darkness. That is poverty. True. That is poverty of spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it, 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 it is on both levels that this is not just about position and station in life. So Christ-like is not to say we are one kind of you know, shawl with a big stick like this. Even yesterday we have it on the video. And uh, it's Romans, by the way. But it, it, it's not just about that. And it's not just about saying, yeah, it's, gonna be, it's not going to be the man in the three-piece suit rolling in the, in the, in the, in the, in the five series, or uh, the seven series, right? It, it's, it, it doesn't have anything to do with that. But those things can become the blockages to the Christ-like living. True. And the next point I want to ask, they like they didn't hide about life and have things and they have everything and got children. One thing they now realize that oh Christ is death. They mm -hmm. never think about death. Mm -hmm. But all of them can dead anytime. Mm -hmm. They never think about death to go to afterlife to accept death. Mm -hmm. That's the next deeper level of fear to them. Mm -hmm. Some of them have everything, you know. Mm -hmm. One thing back in their mind, they worry about death. True that. And that's a great fear. Never, not for them to get there, they never come here before. If they come here before, they would have a confidence within themselves. Or if they knew themselves, they would have All a confidence. Right. That's, that's where Christ returned the, the knowledge of self. And that's what I would say. They need to know themselves because mm -hmm. they're going to ask a question. Have you faced death before? And they can't talk. Mm -hmm. They will be speechless. They are afraid of it, they're running from it, yeah. And Christ beat it already with immortality and death up in the next Overcome it, yes. All right. And they give us the gifts of that kingdom. And them have to think about who had the graveyard. Have they come back? All right, how do you pay off the dead? That's what go with them. Leave the dead alone. Mm -hmm. Leave the dead of the dead. So some, <laughs> yes, I me? agree. So if you go on like your life, go pay it death then. Pay it death and come back. Prove it. You go on like your God. Go on like your God. That means go on like your God. Exactly one, there. Money can't be in your back, you know. Exactly. can't be in your back, you know. Everything that the government took away, you're gone. It's gone. That's the next part. So when you're there with the vanity, you see vanity? But you, you know, walk. But you know, uh, but you know it becomes more and more evident as, as you're wrapping up. People like say when you're dead, you're gone. But you're still here. But it's a presence that is no longer there. Which is the life itself which we always said never belong to you. Because if three bodies right there, right, we can definitely say that body is not Mike, that body is not Wayne, and that body is not Charmian. Oh. You understand me? Mm. So we can know that's, that's you there. That's, that's oh. not, you know, we know who that is right there. Oh. But is the life force, that which you don't own, mm. there. Because that's what we're talking about. You have to show it clearly, you know. That's what we're talking about. If you can say you are that life force, put yourself back in there. If you are that life force, don't leave there. Mm -hmm. So if you are not that life force, then what's going on here? That's what religion, that's what faith is all about. That's what spirituality is all about. Thanks. That's what Christ-like living is about. Because we are not that life force. The life force came, manifested amongst us, and showed us an expression of the life force as a living, being, breathing human being. Living a Christ-like existence is very much possible. It is our way of life if you just but allow it. And then, how come, kids make a point when they're there, how come when the female is dead and they have to bury a turtle away, mm -hmm. they can't go to turtle mm -hmm. with the body, mm -hmm. you know, and the female have to return the earth, you know? Yes. Then you have to tell the people that you have to, you have to be quiet. Yes. Tell you not a part of the mental and let you exactly. tell out your tone and become black. So many people do not. Many people try not to understand what Baba said, but the truth is this: when the people them have taken an oath against the Most High and His anointed saints in the ultimate departure of their physical body from the energy field, remember they didn't give the spirit. But when that spirit is separated from the physical being, that physical being cannot be placed in the womb of the earth. 
that being has to go into a vault. And whatever name we call these beings, this has been a case for millennia. Because these are rejected entities. You understand me? So people might think there's not a natural law or a natural order that is cosmic. Well, that's why you probably do not have a faith or a spirituality. Because I those beings are rejected beings. All as right. Bobby's saying, they yeah, lose the natural I law. Next question. When all the are ready to leave the earth, they set up and bury it. You know? <laughs> and you know, when people are all died, they have no disease or nothing. It's like natural. Mm -hmm. Same to the queen. Transcendent. They realize that you have a natural people, you just lie on your body and be spiritually going to leave the body naturally. True. In a peaceful manner. If, and that's a, if, that's if, if, you're, in, if like, you're in the you kingdom, know, that's what we'll come to know. If okay, you're in the I'm kingdom, do, uh, you are not that body lying there. But I'm saying there's a majority of people who have not awake to the kingdom will be that body lying there. That is what the, 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 that's what Christ is trying to show people and they're pretending like in an understanding. The doorways to the kingdom is open because of being like him who is from that place. So all the right, entrance, right. so, so the the entrance is to the celestial divine realms by a certain practice and a certain way of being. So the people who do not achieve that awakening, when the separation of the spirit from the body comes up, their spirit will not go to the divine realms. Just like the people who are rejected from the natural law. So those who died without Christ still can go into the soil and upon that moment when he's resurrected and to the years of, of the blissful thousand years upon the earth, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Because upon his celestial awakening, the first coming, he went down to Shaul and, and ministered to, to the generations that knew him not. Right? That expected him to come. So they could not call on his name. But was on the assurance of his promise. You know that he is here. So why did he have to go and do that? What did he go down there for? Because if we are saying this as it is, you know, we are talking about energy and we already proved this in metaphysics. So what would, where did he go? He went to the underworld. A dimension on a plane. Why did he went to the underworld where the soul, where those last souls are? Because the entities that are there are not physical bodies. Right. But why would he go there? Because that's the being, that's where it went. So the being with the right the soul that don't own itself, uh -huh. didn't follow the right laws, where it go? It got down there. And those who didn't know him went there before. And mm -hmm. so they were saved by the assurance mm -hmm. that when he came, yeah. so he, he went down there to them to give the light, to do what? Bring their souls out of shore. And go back to the divine. Yeah, and take them to the divine realms. I, I yeah, got the vision. And that's because nothing of them come into the underworld many times to learn the lesson of the underworld. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to go there. We don't want to experience them no more. They know that's it. That's the main point. They know it. Because I see the vision, I know what underwear looks like. I see the vision will link up. I see the third eye told me that be a hell, be a demon. A lot of them there. Lots of suffering. Innumerable yeah, suffering. Of them, and realms within realms too. So remember that within the underworlds, there are dimensions within dimensions within the same hell, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, because the thing is that it's the different layers of souls over time that has peopled hell. People are there for many reasons. The blockages are created for many reasons. Somebody can say, as simple as a makeup brush can possess a human being. And things like these, sometimes we say it, it's a joke to people. Oh, they go so weird. A simple thing as a makeup brush can be symbolic of a possession that is so intense. See, that soul will not leave shoal because of that makeup brush. And people will recreate that makeup brush for thousands of years to enchant, beguile, and carry souls down to that place because of that makeup brush. That is why you have to block that pen, that witch pen, and come out of that. Oh, lots, oh, lots oh, of God. things, lots of things are metaphysical oh, on this oh, planet God. that we don't understand. But this is, again, when you follow Christ, when you are living a Christ like life, Nothing of this illusionary world is real. You see it as it is. Remember what he said? When demons possess people, he said, come out. When the demons approached him, did they go to fight a war? They were subdued. What they said, what did they do? They begged. Those who know the word, you want to put the quotes? You want to quote them and leave them in the comments? When they were begging, they said, Father, don't, don't kill me. 
The Thank one you. he took the demons out of, out, out, of the, out of the man that was acting weird upon the island that he came upon. The same demon he cast into the pigs. What, why, did, why were they casting the pigs? Because they asked him. So if he, if he wasn't merciful, right? Why would he have cast those demons into the pigs and not destroy them? So a person who said they are a follower of Christ and do not know that you have metaphysical power over the entities, but you cannot wield the power with darkness in your heart. You have to have love in your heart. With the light all the time. So the demons, when they recognize a true soul, they are confounded. Remember the guy who talked about he was casting out in Jesus' name, in Yahshua's name, and the demons appeared and said, yeah, yeah, sure, me know, but who are you? Mm. I don't know who are you. And that's how speak in the language. Yeah. I was going in a telepathic spirit. So not every spirit, spirit is the same spirit. Vibration. Not every spirit is the yeah, same spirit. Thank you. So following the spirit of Christ gives you power to confound these entities. Some people talking about they give more strength to fallen entities than they give to the power of the word in them. Be careful of those people who they talk more about Lucifer than they talk about God. Listen yep. to our channel. Listen to our channel and you hear what we talk about here. See whose name appear more, right? We are giving no praise to fear and no praise to the dark dominions. We are giving praise to Yeshua that gave us strength. That's a way of, of Christ to be discerning. It's another one of his gifts to be discerning, to speak and know the truth, to speak power over the, the, the forces of darkness. Embrace it out. I let him spirit and say, Embrace it. Because you know the truth. When you know the truth, have a vibe, a quiet vibe. You need that energy. Be you confident. My well, brother, down. this one went far more than we. we but many yeah, times, this, this spirit is always um, direct. And we know in the editing, some parts will work more magically than and more mystically and more beautifully and put than put other parts. But um, I hope this reasoning would have helped you to look at the whole essence of being Christ-like, following Yeshua through the essence of life, going through the journeys in your faith, coming to the ultimate salvation. Sorry, going through the journeys in your faith, going through the ultimate awakening in Christ, coming to know what is blessed and beautiful, yeah? Loving Yeshua, having your Christ-like -like existence. Use that power of the metaphysical word, of the pay, to speak power into the life of the little disenfranchised boys and girls, men and women across the world, empowering the spirit of Yeshua, empowered through the spirit of Yeshua, your fellow human beings. Stand in confidence of faith, man. Be Christ-like. Be a warrior in faith. Yeah? Anything before we go, Brother Ramon, until next time, you know what I mean? Yeah, more you don't know, just perfect love, you know? Just perfect love. Meaning that Try to just love perfectly, you know? Love your ones and ones, love your family, love your friends. It's easy for do that, mm -hmm. but love your enemy. Ah, that one is not too easy, <laughs> but it's true. No, no, no enemy, think about, and that will be easier. <laughs> think about the person who hurt you, and make sure your heart clean with that person, and make sure you forgive them. So that's my little thing before we left, you know? Ah. And the next point I'm going to add, I know it's difficult to love the eminence, but if you have a celestial realm vision where you see the eminence go down and you laugh in your inner self, love them more. And when them go down, they will come back. But show them love. Absolutely. At the end of the day, I recognize most people who go through life hurt you. The next lifetime, death happen, you know? And you have to forgive them, you know? Because they're different dimensions you want to learn how to not to be physical bent on or revenge because you don't need it. True that. You don't need it. You have a True higher that. power when you do something you can drop out because that wrong energy behind their spirit, just leave it. Watch it play out. That's the only way you can avoid the fullness and just learn, you know? Ah, blessings. Until next time, this has been Reasonings Right here at the Chair Life. Brother Raman Singh, Brother Lawrence Anderson, Brother Jerome Butler. Just reminding you to live your Christ-like existence, you know what I mean? Blessings and honor. Until next time, love, love, love.